I'm about to call my mama. I'm about to call Miss Billie Jean. Here, get your bendy and continue your coloring. Huh? Uh, Miss Billie Jean? Yes, it is. Is it, is it too late for me to put in an order for a Thanksgiving pie? <laughs> it sure is for Thanksgiving. What? <laughs> Metal and me. Yes. Ask what you. Mama, your order's already. Your, Jamie, don't do that. Your order's already booked? Are you already filled? Uh, I'm filled up. I'm filled up pretty much. I took, uh, I was going to take the order in June. Three months ago? Yeah, three months ago. Three months ago? That's right. Lord have mercy. My order is done. Uh, I have more pies after that thing. Else. I was going to ask you if you have more pies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So are you going to do Christmas too or just Thanksgiving? Just Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How you gonna make us a dessert and stuff and tell them what I have? No, we're here early, that's why. That's a black set. I am here for the Black Santa and Black Black Mrs. Claus. Yes, come through with the representation. I'm here for the Gray Santa too. It's perfect, so we just got out of fries. Um, it is cold, now it's cold. It's 54 degrees. Yeah, that's cold. So, y'all look real quick. Our fries has put in eight additional self-service, um, what do you call them, stations. Like, what, what is going on? I like that, but I'm like, again, they're trying to save money because they didn't got to hire no employees. They ain't got to worry about no uniforms, no insurance, no benefits. Oh, he's talking about that. <laughs> anyway, so, y'all remember I was talking about another mom that I've been seeing at the gym and her body is banging. If I haven't, there is a mom. Her child go all her kids except one goes to JB school. She has the perfect body. When I tell you homegirl's body, so I noticed that she's you know she does little cardio and a lot of weight. So she started talking to me a little bit more yesterday. She just so stopped me and started talking to me. And I was like, great, the girl with the the great body. Come to find out, I thought she was very young. She's 35. I'm like, oh, that makes me feel better. She's 35. And she's like, well, if you see me at the gym, just, you know, we can work out together. I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, though, great, because then you, you can look way better. You Then you can really look good. And my ass is next to you. <laughs> so, um, again, she's saying she's a vegetarian. Uh, she eats lots of fruits and vegetables. I knew this just by looking at her. Um, um. I am up. Yeah, I need to go ahead and get home. I'm pulling JB off his singular too. I'm coming off the singular, singular clearly, singular and family. pulling Just JB off because, like I told y'all, I, I, my, and then my, my neighbor who's a nurse, she started sending me articles Woo. on the side effects of singular. It's really bad for adults, but even worse. No, the side effects are worse for children, like. Uh, depression as young as four years old I'm like what pulling him off I'm so sorry yeah I have to handle that um but my my neighbor who's an RN talking about JB she's an RN she started sending me articles on the side effects and dangers of singular long-term use for children my new JB has been on singular since he was three three years old he's two years for adults, it causes um, anxiety. They just they just discovered this, meaning in the last five or six years. Um, but yeah, I was telling my husband, he's like, take him off of it. I immediately take him off. He's like, wonder why he's he's act crazy sometimes. Acts completely in. And in a minute here, we I'm gonna lay out a blanket and lay down in the grass. Okay. okay. Oh Lord, I got on a dress. <laughs> How are you gonna do? <laughs> Late 
child. Well, I lay on my back to go to bed, but normally, girl, when you when I had those big tito bitties, when I lay on my back, boom, all up in my face, all up in your armpits. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> For a long time. Lots of cool dance moves. Um, really quickly, guys, we're gonna get this out of our system. I want everyone to find their parent and wait. <laughs> Hey you guys, so I just dropped JB off of school and I wanted to show y'all that because I typically am one of those type of parents who don't want to have any, I don't know, I want the atmosphere of my channel to be a certain feel because I know a lot of you guys are going through things at home and this is your escape, you know, to go on YouTube and look at videos, at least that's what I do. So I sure as hell don't want to get on YouTube and look at it and know damn five-year-old screaming and crying but i wanted to show you that piece because life is imperfect and i'm telling you the past two or three weeks for my family has been at least for me my husband's like whatever girl uh for me it's been challenging and i'm one of those type of people that definitely gets the holiday anxiety um those you know i was sick uh, the last vlog I was sick getting over, or well, actually it was beginning with asthma, and it turned into a full-blown um, upper respiratory. On a slew of steroids, and those of you who don't know, uh, a lot of the times being on a lot of steroids can cause hypertension, can cause anxiety, and if you have underlying anxiety already, it snowballs. And so that is what I have been going through for the past week. I am on medication. I'm not ashamed to say that, um, but I I needed to get on something right away. And so I'm on Barispony or Baris, what they nickname is Barispo whatever and that has been happening but girl I had to get my Xanax and I just got my Xanax two days ago so I was without any type of emergency meds for about five or six days it was horrible but in between all of that I was reading my bible I was praying essential oil girl <laughs> have my Jesus oil Frankie's and oil lavender oil and really just taking the time to slow down and changing my focus an analogy of it and then I heard the voice of God said change your focus Quit focusing on this. Change your focus. You are what you focus on. That's what I heard. You are what you focus on. So I changed my focus like that within 40, 48 hours. I was like, I can't do this. It's not to say I didn't have bouts of it throughout the day. I did. But I regrouped, changed my focus. Cause and I it is. It happens to the best of us. Um, and that's just life. Okay. So dealing with a little bit of anxiety. I'm good right now. I'm smiling I'm good right now, girl. I gotta smile. So back at it. It is November 9th. Um, work is so so. Let me catch y'all up on work because I typically don't like to talk about my work that much. 
work for us during this time of the year is slow as far as client goes those of you who don't know i manage online training for a healthcare it company um we produce uh software training for all of the major insurance companies in the country we touch about 80 percent of the u.s population i'm not even kidding you um blue shield blue cross blue shield of california blue shield of arkansas uh cigna aetna oh my god kern doctor's offices fire stations anyone who has to deal with insurance and they have to use a software we provide training on that software icd-9 oh god when they switch over to icd-10 lord have mercy that's coding medical coding um so I basically set up the client soft, excuse me, the client um, training for my department. And right now it gets a little slow because people take vacations, including, including our clients. Am I getting a pimple? Hold on, y'all. But it's also busy in terms of content when we go over to a new release. And so right now we're transferring from 5.5 to 5.6. Excuse me, we are migrating over to 5.6 yeah you're going through that and jb acting crazy so and speaking of school i forgot until two days ago that i volunteered for today i'm like do what <sighs> so i'm the type of person i stick to you know if i say i'm gonna do something i'm gonna go ahead and do it so all i have to do is bring some graham crackers <coughs> excuse me some snacks and i said i'm gonna show some raggedy ass graham crackers <laughs> around 2 30 but then i totally forgot i told my husband that we could go out to eat so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get ready beat my face the kids are gonna be looking at me they're gonna be like who are you again are you jb's mom because you didn't look like this before so i'm gonna get all dressed up dolled up come up here drop off the snacks get jb early and then we can go out to eat to papa Do's because papa Do's is the spot for black people uh on a friday night so we don't want to be out too late i'll ask my husband he'll probably want to leave at four if he leaves if he decides you know we can leave at four then i will wait and get ready at home um i'm also going to do a little hair video because i don't have anything really planned um as far as hair related content so but it is really sad the amount of times that I have driven around and I see flags are at half mass. I, I feel like flags are at half mass for almost the entire damn year, it feels like. So, anyway, enough of that. Trump is still on his foolery, <laughs> y'all. I did watch the conference of him. That man is, is a psychopath. There is something mentally... No one in their right state of mind would, re would react the way that he has reacted to people. No one. Uh, put it like this. If this wasn't Trump, and, and this is something that I would question Trump supporters. If that wasn't the president of the United States and just a random person talking to in a conference, like at work. Let's say this is a work setting. And this is someone talking down to another person. Wouldn't you think that person was crazy as hell? I would. Girl, so anyway, enough about that. So this is what I wanted to say, because this was on my heart to speak about this. Um, about friendships and, you know, um, giving advice to friends and all that. <clears throat> I'm the type of person, unfortunately, that people come to and they like to tell all their business to, girl. And a lot of the times, they're not necessarily looking for advice. They are looking for someone to hear them. I'm um, what you call an empath. Is that how you say it? I'm very empathetic to people. And I have that energy that attracts a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities, a lot of different broken people. Um, I get people in their season of hurt. But then, unfortunately, I take on that hurt because I'm a very sensitive person and I take on that energy. So, a lot of the times, I have to be very mindful of whom I allow in my circle. Um, I know someone, I, I mentioned that the girl with the Megan body up here has approached me. And she, last night, there was a kid's, at the kid's, um, the kindergarten event that I showed you guys clips of earlier. She approached me again. So, I think her energy is pulling me in because I'm not approaching her. She's coming to me, you know what I mean? So whatever I'm exuding out is gravitating and pulling sometimes people who have some really effed up issues. And I listen to them and I politely uh, send them on their way so that I can't keep, because that, that stuff can be toxic to you. Um, but, but as far as friendships, people that you have friends, you know, you have long-standing friendship relationships with, 
I've always been the type of friend, and I hope my friends are like this to me, I'm very unbiased. When they come to me with any type of issues they're having, um, first of all, I let them I let them know exactly how I feel, girl, in a very PC way. Again, very empathetic. I, I show compassion regardless of whatever your situation is. Um, just to give you an example, my best friend have been going through some issues. I'm not going to go into detail because I want to respect her privacy. And uh, going through some issues with her husband. Instead of being the type of friend, because I knew some issues would come up because I'm just that type of person, girl. I, I can I can read energy. I can I can read through uh, personalities, and I know when some things are going to happen because it happens. You when you're married, you're gonna have issues. So issues were coming up. They were they were getting really bad, and she was coming to me about it. Now I I saw it coming a mile away, and I could have been the friend, a bit of, a type of friend that would be like, oh, I told you so. I could have done that. I told you so. This could have happened. Instead of doing that, though, I, you know, uh, looked at it from both sides, her husband's side and her side. And I let her, I checked her on some things because that's what a friend is supposed to do. I checked her on some things on her behavior. I encouraged her to pray for her husband, to pray for herself. And um, I prayed for their marriage. Uh, even though, you know, it's so easier to walk away when you're going through it. And it doesn't matter any type of relationship. It is much easier, <coughs> excuse me, to walk away. The hard work is working on the relationship. So I prayed over it. And this has been going on for, oh my God, for like almost a year. And glory to God, by the grace of God, they are at a better spot right now. And they're working on some things. And she sent me a text message a couple of months ago. She's like, you know, thank you so much. Um, for your advice and she's like you you basically gave me the, the same advice my therapist did I said girl let me go ahead and build your ass then um, but I say all of that to say this a lot of the times when we feel like it's so much easier to tell someone oh girl leave that man oh girl you know um, you know cut that person off you may be in that person's life for a reason or for a season we say um, I would never tell someone to leave their marriage unless they are being uh, physically and mentally abused. I'm for I'm for marriage. I'm for love. So I'm always the one that you know. If someone tells me they're going through a divorce or they're they're getting separated, I'm like, oh my god, no. Let's. Well, what can we do, girl? Let's put you. Let me send you a prayer cloth. So I encourage you. If one of your friends come to you with a situation, don't be the type to have them to throw in the towel. No matter what it is, you know, our job or. I always show them the positive of things, uh, by, but also be realistic. What are all these adults doing? Hold on, y'all. I'm very, look, I'm very, why are all these adults getting out? What are they doing? Okay, Vivian, calm down. Oh, y'all, I didn't even give y'all the news. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. I've been meaning to do, it, <clears throat> to do a chit-chat video, but I just haven't um, been in a good mindset, uh, you know, so I was like, no, we ain't gonna do that. I haven't been in good spirits, but have y'all been seeing videos of this $400, <laughs> a $400 blow dryer? You, first of all, you got to be at your damn mind if you're going to buy it. Now, if they want to send it to me, yes, but I'm going to let my subscribers know, don't, don't buy no $400. Don't buy this. $400 blow dryer. First of all, it's giving me phallic teas. And if you don't know what a phallic is, look it up. Just don't look it up at work, girl. It's giving me phallic teas the way they moving it up and down girl the spirit of phallic or whatever the hell so blow dryer is four hundred dollars and i've seen a couple of people a couple of well-known youtubers first of all i'm not even the type of person to review something like that because i know that for my core audience you would not buy that so why in the hell would i feature that on my channel girl four hundred dollars it's supposed to i looked it up it's supposed to dry your hair three times faster i'm like okay four hundred dollars for can I pre-poo? Can it detangle? Can I dust my damn blinds? I am not paying $400 for a blow dryer. I feel like this hair accessory was marketed for salons and not for people. And they wanted to send, this is what they doing. Cause y'all, it's all about money. They wanted to send it to some well-known black natural hair YouTubers because they know that black women are one of the number one consumers. Black people in general are one of the number one consumers when it comes to hair products here in America. They have a payment plan for those of you who are interested. But girl, are you going to pay your rent? Or are you going to get a blow dryer? Y'all, there is no way. My $25 red 
<laughs> blow dryer kiss is a kiss blow dryer will work just as fine baby i'm not paying four hundred dollars for no damn blow dryer so real quick you guys before i go to the gym a good opportunity came my way a couple of weeks ago i was contacted by miss arlette pender she's a stylist out here in scottsdale arizona and i've had several videos y'all seen her in several videos of mine oh not a lot probably like two or three She's done my hair. We did the Jane Carter um, Healthy Line review. And she approached me to film an upcoming event she's doing next month. I said, me? Because <laughs> when I look at my, I don't feel like I'm the greatest editor. I think that I could be better. I really do. I think that if I took my time, I absolutely could be a lot better than what I am doing right now. I just don't have that much time in editing. Especially with the amount of footage I have. Y'all literally... Because by the time I do my vlogs, I typically have an hour and a half footage. Yes, my vlogs, an hour and a half, and I edit that down to between 25 and 30. My hair related, sometimes 15 to 20. What the hell is that? Anyway, y'all. Um, And my hair related video will sometimes be 15, 20, 25 minutes edit it down to like between five and eight minutes and i know some of y'all like longer videos but some i almost caught her a hood rat some young lady recently posted on one of my videos wow it took you almost five minutes to get to the product i get those comments for my longer videos wow get to the point so uh, what's the point so anyway I'm going to be a videographer I could put that under my belt now so yeah I'm excited about that first I was a surprise y'all I'm like okay um me so anyway y'all let me hush up I've been rambling for a while I will talk to you guys I will show you my hair because I will be doing a hair related video today just taking down my twists I have to have something for y'all helpers so I'll just be showing you guys how I take down my hair but then I will be doing the tutorial for that hairstyle probably um probably next month I'll do the official tutorial for y'all um but all right you guys see you in a few To eat, keys the boo. What are you gonna? Are you gonna eat your fries? No. Oh, uh, she's over there figuring out her life. I'm done with my fries. Hey, y'all! It is Sunday. Um. I put my hair, last night I was just busy and decided not busy. I was, yeah, I've been binge watching Fear of the Walking Dead and I'm all caught up. My best friend got me on it because uh, we both were fans of The Walking Dead and those, you know, The Walking Dead is done, girl. Fifth season finale. Well, it was Rick Grimes' last um, episode. So I'm like, I I'm done with Walking Dead. Yeah, let me get back on Fear of the Walking Dead. And oh, I'm glad I did because Frank... Frank from How to Get Away with Murder is on there. I'm like, yes, Frank, not only do you hide bodies from Annalise, but you also kill zombies. I am here for it. Although, in um, Fear of the Walking Dead, Frank is a little... I, I don't like this, y'all. I don't like how a lot of the times in these movies when they have, especially movies that are based in the South, the people are kind of downplayed as being dumb. So I wouldn't say that, that Frank's character on, on Fear of the Walking Dead is dumb, but he's dense. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't you know, that that smart up, up top. Something's wrong up, up top. Um, but he's still fine as hell. Hell, I'll take you dumb and fine. <laughs> um, anyway, I, what, what was I talking about that for, girl? So I, oh, after I done that, I had a little productive day yesterday. Took JB to his Michael's class. JB has been taking craft class at Michael's. Um, he was going to go to one today, but girl, instead he want to go to Sears. Now, let me, let me. <laughs> JB has been watching. My child is unique. I think JB's an old soul. He has been watching documentaries on Blockbuster, Toys R Us, Dillard's, um, 
random stuff girl so he now has his infatuation now that he knows all about it he's like i want to go i said oh oh but you can't blockbuster is no longer available he's like well why didn't you take me there while we were in texas i said baby I, there's no more blockbusters so and so I said, okay, baby, let me look and see. So I'm like, you know what? Radio Shack. Radio Shack, I know for sure, is on the chopping block and Kmart. So let me look around my local area to see what stores. Girl, don't you know they shut down the last Kmart in Phoenix last year? I was like, what? I was really shocked with that, y'all. I said, okay, well, let me look for Radio Shack. So because he saw a video on Radio Shack. None. There are only five Radio Shacks, y'all. If this not, I'm very surprised. In a world, girl, in a world. Uh, this is all prophesied, revelation. So anyway, um, uh, I shared it on Facebook, and one of my Facebook, one of my old coworkers said, actually, there is a video rental place that's still open, but it's in Mesa, which is about a good 45, 50, 50 minutes from us. But they are a video rental place, game rental. They sell um, albums. I said, done. JB will love it. So we're going to plan a trip there next weekend. I'll take y'all with me if they let me record. I loved, let me know, y'all. I loved Blockbuster, and it was just something about... When we were a kid, you know, going up to Blockbuster, and I mean when they had VHSs, because I'm from Texas, and Blockbuster actually started in Texas, those of you who don't know. And those of you who are not in the States, I'm sorry, let me explain. Blockbuster was a very well-known um, uh, VHS and DVD and game rental place here in the United States. You would go in, rent, and I'm pretty sure they have this, have this in other countries, these type of stores, but this was a known retail. You would go in, you would purchase your, uh, your VHS, you know, whatever, and then you would return it. Now, the way that Blockbuster made money, because JB educated me on all this, the way that Blockbuster made money was by late fees. At one point, they had close to 6,000 stores. Now, there's only one store open, and then in Oregon, I believe is where it's at. But long story short, girl, Blockbuster went out of business due to online video streaming. A man created a company by the name of Netflix after some late fees he was acquiring from Blockbuster. At the time, Netflix was only doing, and I remember this, Netflix was only doing, um, online dvds like you you would go online find what you want and then you would get the dvd in the mail then they started doing the online streaming now catch this t blockbuster was actually approached by netflix to buy in and blockbuster said oh no that doesn't that doesn't seem like a we're not going to do that we got our own thing going on big mistake a, clearly a big mistake it didn't take too long after that um so the last store i know here in phoenix shut down in 2013 so y'all anyway I, I say all that to say my child is very but very much um infatuated with that type of stuff so today and i'll film some today we're going to sears because unfortunately sears has filed for bankruptcy um october and i knew sears was having some problem in my opinion um after sears i have a feeling that jc pennies is going to follow suit yeah let me hush up I'm gonna give a shout out to someone real quick. She's on my Instagram and I don't know if you watch my videos. I'm assuming you do watch my YouTube videos. So a shout out to, and I know you're pregnant, um, and I think you're a doctor. Let me get that correct because if, if you if you are a doctor, I wanna give you your props because that is an accomplishment. She is, Dr. Melanie Howell. I want to thank you for your words, your sweet words. Um. I posted a pic. I'm going to really try hard not to cry, you guys. Around this time of the year, I get really, really homesick because especially with my father being ill and with the deaths in my family. Y'all, those of you who don't know, I had an aunt that passed away from cancer um, a, couple of, a couple of weeks ago. I also had a cousin that passed away. And there's some other family dynamics going on just on both sides of my families where making it, it's, it's really hard this year to be away from home. My husband is working on Thanksgiving, so it will be JB and I. So earlier today, I posted a picture of what I, I'm cooking for Thanksgiving, you know. My husband will be home. Can y'all see it? My husband will be home to eat. He doesn't go into work till 1 o'clock, but essentially, we will be by ourselves for the holidays. Um, So I'm cooking, girl, buttermilk chicken, dressing, butternut squash, toffee, pound cake over bourbon and caramel sauce. <laughs> balsamic um, green beans cranberry and buttermilk pie those of you from the south you know what buttermilk pie is basically a custard pie so um 
Dr. Howell asked me, Miss Melanie asked me, she's like, well, how many, you know, people are you having over? And I said, well, unfortunately, y'all, and I got teary eyed just typing it back. I said, unfortunately, you know, I don't have any family here. So it'll, and my husband has to work. It'll just be JB and I. And so she wrote back, let me read her comment. It's just a very sweet comment. And it just really, <sighs> I'm tearing up y'all because it, it, I really needed to hear these words right now. Um, she wrote that, you know, she said, but you know what? There's something beautiful about taking the time, effort, and care of making such a nicely planned out meal for your son. It tells JB that the two of you are important enough for a beautiful Thanksgiving meal, regardless of who's coming. Same thing with keeping a beautiful home. Um, that really meant so much to me because I don't have any, I don't have any family here. And so with my husband working and JB's a little bit older and you know, you don't, we don't have the big family gatherings and um, I'm seeing, you know, posts from my mom already online and she's already getting stuff prepared for, you know, my family back home because my sister has, you know, my sister has four kids. So it's really hard, you know, being down here. And I know there's some of you who are by yourself. So we'll just be having Thanksgiving together, y'all. You know, we'll, we'll be, you know, I will be vlogging that day. I will have a separate cooking. Let me get my face together, y'all. All right. I'll have a separate cooking video and then I'll have another video of vlogging, you know, of what's going on throughout the week. Because I'm off that week. Hey, man, I'm off that week. Ryan Little. <laughs> Well, that, that's Big Karen. Big Karen. That's Karen from 1990. I think that's 1995. Uh, <laughs> not 1995, girl. Early 2000 Karen Clark Shear with LaShawn Page from the Page Sisters, y'all. I'm a, I love me some old school gospel. 90s. You cannot beat late 90s, early 2000 gospel music. Not this mess they got today. That they be mixing gospel with two chain and. Anyway, do what you gotta do what you gotta do to get, get the kids in church, I guess. But I'm going to be dropping JB off next door. I'm gonna text message her boo -boo to oh, see if you too get much your coffee. hand out of that thing for I slapping you in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> I'ma slap JB, I'ma backhand you. <laughs> I'm gonna slap <laughs> I'm gonna backhand you into the next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all take care. <laughs>